We're wrapping up a series today uh, that we've been doing this summer called Summer Short Stories. So welcome. Glad you're here for that. We're going to move on to something else starting next week. But this has been an awesome series, I think, where we've been looking at parables of Jesus. Jesus tells dozens of parables. We've been looking at just six or seven that he told and how those parables uh, teach us truths about God and what it means to live life in God. So that's what this series has been about. Parables are short stories Jesus told that point beyond the story to something bigger, something greater. I'm so thankful for Jessica. I'm so thankful for Bob who spoke while I was gone. And uh, man, just being able to share these parables with you has been awesome. I hope this has been a good series for you. I wanted to end it today by talking about something that church people like to talk about, that Christians like to talk about. If you're not a church person, if you're not a Christian, I'm so glad you're here. Maybe you've heard this term, this phrase, church people love to talk about this. Here it is, spiritual growth. You ever talked about that or heard about that in the church? We love to say, man, we're gonna, we want to grow spiritually. You ever, right? Christians say that so much. We love to talk about spiritual growth. And we should. It's an important thing. And if you were to become a Christian, if you're not, you should know growing spiritually is something that we're supposed to do. In fact, sometimes people, can I say this? Sometimes people don't become Christians or aren't church people because they look at church people, us, they look at Christians and they go, I don't see any growth. They talk about love and all these things, but I don't really see that. I see judgment and other things instead. So spiritual growth is really important. Jesus talked about spiritual growth all of the time. And so what is spiritual growth? I mean, it's fairly simple. It's growing, maturing in the things of God and the life that he wants us to live. So when we talk about spiritual growth, we're not talking about just knowledge that we get from the Bible. We're not talk- we often say uh, here at Quest, it's not about information only, it's about transformation. So w- we want to be transformed by what God shows us and teaches us. When we learn about something, we want it to be where we go out and we're the hands and feet of Jesus in the world in the community around us. I want to talk about spiritual growth because Jesus talked about spiritual growth. And again, church people, Christians, we love to talk about spiritual growth. So Jesus talks about it in Mark chapter 4 with a parable of a farmer and seeds. And we've actually looked at parables of farmers and seeds during this series. So here's another one. This is not one we've done before. It's another one. Jesus used images that they would have known, and it was an agricultural society. So they would have seen farms. They would have seen, they would have all, most people planted things in their yards because that's how they grew food right? So they would have understood these images. So Jesus says this, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground night and day. Check this out. While he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crop on its own. So Jesus gives the image of a farmer with a small seed who plants it in the ground, and then it becomes the crop. It's just an amazing process. Jesus goes into a little more detail because he wants us to really get what he's saying. And so in the next verse, he says, first a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. So Jesus gives kind of a visual image, and I actually have some images. A seed is placed in the ground, Jesus says, and then a couple of leaves pop through, right? Do you remember who, who, when you look at this, you go, I remember when I was a kid and I brought home the styrofoam cup with the little soil and whatever that white junk is on top of it, right? The fertilizer. And then all of a sudden you just every day waking up to see what, if that leaf blade pops through and then it looks like this and it grows into something more. It's just amazing how that happens. And Jesus says it goes on and it becomes the grain. Grain was very important. Wheat was very important to that culture, made bread and all kinds of other things that they would eat. Very important uh, crop for them. And then it's finally ripened and it's harvested so that it can be consumed, so that it can be eaten, so that it can be used for what it was meant for. So Jesus gives this image and in here he's talking about what? Growth of a plant, 
of something, this tiny seed. It's crazy, is it not, that you put a little seed in the ground and ultimately you get whatever that seed is. It becomes what it was meant to be. And what's, what's really interesting about this, what's fascinating, is that Jesus says, do you notice that it just kind of happens? If it's in the ground and the farmer puts it there, what happens? Does the farmer have to toil? Does the farmer have to will it? Does he have to stand over and go, grow, grow, grow? Does he have to do that? Does he have to work to make it grow? Beyond putting it in the ground, beyond letting it have water and just letting the sun get to it, beyond knowing that it's in fertile soil, does he have to do any of that? No. He goes to town and what happens? It grows. He goes to sleep and what happens? It grows. Whatever the farmer does, the seed grows. Whatever the farmer doesn't do, the seed grows. It's interesting because if, you, if I highlight, I want to highlight this part. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crop on its own. What Jesus is trying to tell us is it doesn't will itself. It doesn't work itself to make it happen. No matter what the farmer does, it grows. Now, I want you to start to think about spiritual growth related to that. You guys understand this idea of, of growth because, well, think about it. when you were a kid, if you, I were, <laughs> if you wanted to grow taller, could you just go, grow taller, grow taller, grow, grow, grow? No, it didn't happen, did it? Maybe you tried that, but it didn't happen. I've tried with my hair. Nothing has happened. Grow, grow, grow. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> But what's crazy is that you grew, but not because you willed it or thought about it or something like that. You just grew. Do you remember going to grandma or grandpa's house? I went to my grandparents' house um, sometimes, but not, they didn't live close. And so when we go to visit, they would always say the same thing. You get that big hug and like maybe my grandma would take me and give me some chocolate donuts without my mom knowing about it. Don't tell your mom about this. Okay, grandma. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. She did that. Um, and then she would say, oh, my, you've gotten so big. Right? Didn't grandparents always say that to you? You've gotten so big. You've grown so tall. You're so different than you looked before. And you're like, huh? Because you don't notice it. It just what? Happens over time. It's crazy, right? If you look back at pictures, kids look back at pictures, my kids will, and they're like, geez, look at me a year ago to now. And then what's crazy is you don't really notice it until you look at the pictures. I look at a picture of my daughter and I'm like, geez, I remember when I brought her home from the hospital and she was a little bitty baby and now she's in Belize. How did this happen, right? It just did over time. And that's kind of the same image of the seed. If you put it in the ground and you just let nature take its course, what happens? It grows. What is Jesus saying here about spiritual growth? I want you to, let's, let's dig into this. I mean, is he saying that spiritual growth just kind of naturally happens? Because I think some of you guys are sitting there, and if you're like me, you're like, you know, I don't know if I agree with Jesus. Because in my own life, I would say to you that I'm not as mature as I want to be, though my body has changed and grown or whatever. Um, I have not grown spiritually, just naturally. Just like my body has grown, I just haven't naturally grown spiritually. Have you? I haven't. And so I'm not as mature as I want to be in my faith. I'm not where I want to be. Um, some of you would even say, I've taken some steps backwards. In fact, I haven't grown. I've not grown. And in fact, I've done more than not grown. I've, I'm worse off than I was yesterday or a year ago. So what's Jesus saying? I mean, it kind of, he's like, look, if you put seed in the ground, you don't have to will and work at it. It's just going to grow. That's what the kingdom of God is like. That's what spiritual growth is like. Isn't it supposed to just happen? That's a great question. Um, can I share with you personally um, that for years and years, I didn't get this. Seriously, you all have heard me say, if you come here long enough, that I'm an earner which means I like to work so that I feel like God approves me. Anybody else in the house approves of me? 
I don't know why, it's just the way I am, and if I'm not doing good stuff for God, then I just don't feel like he loves me. Many people are that way. It's very hard for me to accept that God just loves me like I am. Um, He does, but it's just hard for this guy to accept that. Maybe you struggle with that as well. So I spend a lot of time, I'm going to grow. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to read more. I've done multiple times. I've done that. I'm reading the Bible this year, and I have completely failed anybody else in the house. Like, the only time I did it was when I had to do it in seminary for a test. <laughs> Seriously. At the end of seminary, by the way, they told us, hey, you've got to read the whole Bible, and there will be a test at the end of it. I was like, you didn't tell us this? Like this huge Bible proficiency thing, which makes sense. Amen. You want a preacher that's, you know, read the Bible? (laughs) Why would that be important, you know? But I was so worried because I'd taken all these classes and then like, if I don't pass this test, I don't get out, you know? But many of you in your professions have to do that, right? Why not this? So, man, I struggle with it. So I I would work really hard. I would try to will it. You hear what I'm saying? I will and work my way to spiritual growth and it didn't work. I almost feel like it made it worse. Like, I I just couldn't get to where I felt defeated. I felt like if I missed a day spending time with God, I would beat myself up. Anybody else do this kind of? Sometimes the church tells you that, you know? So that didn't work. So I've tried the other way as well, which is like, hey, I'm just going to naturally let this happen. Like Jesus talked about, like this parable. I'm not sure I knew this parable about that, but I'm just going to somehow grow because Jesus says you grow. You're just like a seed planted in the ground and woo, there it goes. And you know what? I don't feel like that works either. So I feel like on one extreme, I will it, I work it, I try, and I'm not growing, not really. In fact, sometimes I'm worse off. And other times I'm like, I'm not going to do anything. And that doesn't work either. So Jesus, what are you talking about? that you plant a seed in the ground. That's, remember, this is something bigger. Jesus isn't talking about grain here. He's not talking about a crop. That's not what is interested. It's about you. It's about your life. And he's like, the kingdom of God is like this. It's like a farmer who plants seed in the ground. It bursts out of the ground. It finally is ripened, and it becomes what it's supposed to become. That's a picture of the church. That's a picture of the kingdom. That's a picture of spiritual growth. Well, I think we have to be careful to go to either extreme. And I think we have to understand It's not that there's not work involved. It's just not the kind of work that we tend to do. You can't just go, I want to grow. You can't just take every Bible study in the world and expect to grow. It's not that those things aren't good. In fact, we're going to offer some to you in a few moments. (laughs) But you got to do something with it. There's something important that has to happen. So as I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about this parable... And what Jesus was trying to say, I realized that there are some things that have to happen if you want spiritual growth to happen, right? So two things I think specifically need to happen for spiritual growth to happen. If you're sitting here today and you say, I want to grow spiritually, I'd like to be more mature with my faith. I'd like to grow in the things of God. I want to be more like Jesus. I would say to you, Two things have to happen, and they are exactly the same thing that has to happen to the seed and what the farmer has to do. These things have to happen. This is in the story without being in the story. Jesus didn't say it, but he was alluding to it about what had to happen. So what has to happen? The first thing is, it's going to blow your mind, the seed has to stay planted where it is right? The farmer can't plant the seed and go, oh, no, I'm gonna, now I'm going to pull the seed out. I'm just going to lay it on the windowsill. It's not going to grow roots. Anybody need to be rooted in the house today? A little more root, a little more strength, a little more foundation. I grew up as a military brat. It was hard to be rooted because we moved from place to place to place, right? We had to establish roots quick, and I learned to do that. I will tell you, it's been amazing to be in a place for 20-something years and feel the rootedness. I don't, that's amazing to me. Those of you who live in a place for a long time, it's not going to naturally happen. But if you, work, if, you, if you do the work we're talking about here where you stay planted where you are, you can grow. So Jesus is saying, look, if you want 
to grow spiritually, if you want to become what that seed can become, then you've got to stay planted. Can I get real specific with you in four areas to stay planted? I'll say them real quick. First of all, stay planted in God's Word. Read Scripture. So often, I listen to we in the church and us as Christians. Do you, do you know most Christians don't read the Bible? Yet, we want to grow spiritually. What if I told you the Bible was God's love letter to you to tell you how much you're loved? Anybody struggle with identity or feeling loved? <laughs> I do. It tells me, me, I don't have to earn it. I'm accepted as I am. The, the Bible is not a rules book. See, a lot of people shy away from the Bible because it's hard to understand. I get that and stuff like that. But it's also because the church has made it a book of rules. It's not a book of rules. It's a love letter from God to you. I got some love letters while I was in Belize this week. And, you know, I love to read that because, you know, hey, my wife loves me. She's praying for me while I'm here, whatever it is. Um, that's the same thing. God's given you a love letter, and, and sometimes it sits there completely unopened. It's just sitting there. If you knew that there was a love letter from somebody really important to you and it was sitting there on the table in your house, would you read it? Would you want to know what it said? What if you looked at the Bible, though? It's God's love letter to us. So you've got to stay there, stay planted there. That's one place. Another place, prayer, secondly. What is prayer? It's simply, I think we make this way too theological, way too difficult. Prayer is simply talking to God and listening to God. Both listening, anybody struggle with the listening part? I do. I tell God, here's my list of things I need today. Gotta go. See you later. Take care of those, God. You gotta listen. Sometimes you got to listen for a long time. It's so hard. But I got to listen to God as well. So praying, staying planted in prayer. When was the last time we prayed to God, talked to God, listened to God? Here's one. This is a little bit of toe stepping. You ready? For some of you. Um, stay planted in a church. You know, I think one of the biggest reasons some people don't grow it's because they cannot ever find a church that, meet, that fits everything perfect for them. Newsflash, we ain't perfect here. You're not either, so you're going to make any church imperfect. <laughs> Amen? Can we just all admit that? And we come up with fancy taglines, we're the perfect church for imperfect people and all that, but you know what? It's got to be true. Nobody here is perfect. We're going to mess up. We're going to hurt each other, things like that. But if, if every time that happens, see, it's a sign of immaturity, actually, that you uproot yourself right when the roots start to grow. Because maybe God's trying to teach you something about forgiveness and being hurt. And under, I get, but just maybe enough church shopping. Let's stay planted. If this isn't the church for you, that's fine. Find one. Get planted somewhere. I will tell you that being planted in one church for 14 years, this church for me, has grown me more than I've ever grown in my life because of you and because of God. I have grown more than I've ever grown before. Now, if I were to hop around constantly, that wouldn't happen. So I don't know. I just think maybe that's for somebody here. We invite you to stay planted here. We want you to stay planted here. Um, and I think lastly, this one's hard. One more. In difficulty and adversity, stay planted. That's a tough one, right? We tend to run from suffering, not to it. Jesus ran to suffering. That sounds so crazy. It's so backwards. There's crazy verses in the Bible that say, consider it pure joy when you're in trials and suffering. It's just stupid stuff. Like if you think about it, you're like, that is dumb. I, why would I do that? Right? If you were really honest, if you took the church face off, you'd be like, I don't want to suffer. Yet, suffering teaches us so much about God. On the Belize trip this week, um, it always happens 
the team starts struggling midweek. We're exhausted. We've been working long days. And one night at circle time, we sit in a circle and tell stories, and the students can tell you about it. The medical team did it as well. Um, we, the, the students were talking, and I was just like, hey, this is a great opportunity for you to identify with Christ and his suffering. See, I, knew, I could tell in that moment it was an opportunity for spiritual growth for students, high schoolers, to hear that. Um, can I just be honest so often? Man, you might be 50, you might be 60, and you need to hear it. I'm not saying it like young people need to hear that. I need to hear it. It's taken me forever to realize that Christ can form me in my suffering. Amen? That's not a fun amen, is it? But suffering does something in us, to us, transformative. It's not that we look for it. It's not that we want it. I didn't want to lose my hearing last year, a year ago, but I've learned so much through it. I've grown through it. God can turn your obstacles into opportunities and stepping stones, if you will allow him. So stay planted. That's the first thing the seed has to do. And really, it's the farmer that controls that, right? <laughs> the seed cannot uproot itself, right? It's the farmer. So in a lot of ways, we're like the farmer in this story. Don't go uproot what God is doing. Leave it there in all those ways we just talked about. Secondly, you have to cooperate. The farmer has to cooperate. The seed has to cooperate, but really the seed is controlled by the farmer. So it's like us. So th th what I mean is the farmer can't go, you know, grow, <laughs> right? The farmer can't rip it out of the ground. The farmer can't decide to stop watering it. You've got to cooperate with what nature needs so that it'll happen when it comes to the seed becoming fully ripened. Um, we have to cooperate whatever, with whatever God's trying to teach us. Like right now in this moment, do you, can you think of something God's trying to show you? Or, and, and the question is, do you want to cooperate with that? So often we do if it's good, but we don't if it's bad. So cooperating with God is so important as well. Can I give you some examples of what that might look like? Someone offends you. Ever happened to anybody? You know, if you're a Christian, and even if you're not, you may know this, the right thing to do is what? Forgive them. We offended Christ, yet he what? Forgave us. But no, I'm not going to do that for somebody else. And in fact, Christ said, if you can't forgive them, I can't forgive you. What's he saying? He's like, please understand, I'm trying to do something. You've got to cooperate with what I'm trying to do. You're a gossiper. I'm a gossiper. I know it's not the right thing to do, yet I continue to gossip. Do you think you're going to grow spiritually? No. In fact, people won't want to be around you. They may act like, ha, ha, but they, they're like, don't ever say anything to that person because they're going to talk, right? So you have to what? Cooperate. God, do something with my mouth. I struggle with this mouth. I've told gossipers, carry duct tape, man. It would be the best thing you could have with you. Um, maybe, maybe you realize that in order to grow, I need to pray, but you never pray. It's the things you know. It's not that you don't know them. It's just, I know these things. Some of us have been thinking these for years. I always, man, since I was 12 years old, I knew some things I needed to do to grow. I, it's me. Yet I'm 46 and still not doing some of them. And I, grow, John, grow. No, it doesn't happen that way. How does it happen? I have to stay planted where I am and I have to what? Cooperate with whatever God is wanting to do in me. Every day, you're going to be given opportunities to cooperate with God. Have you noticed? Some of you keep ending up in the longest line in the store or at the drive-thru, and you're like, what the heck is wrong with these people when what God might be doing is saying, I'd like to teach you a little patience, John. It's weird sometimes. I'm like, how did I end up in this line? I choose it. I'm like, that's not going to be. So I go over here and I'm like, are you kidding me, anybody else? <laughs> or the same annoying person, which could be you to somebody else, by the way, keeps <laughs> coming into your life. They're very difficult to love. 
Are you supposed to love them? Are you going to cooperate or not? We want to grow spiritually, but we want it to be our agenda, not God's. God wants to do these things in us. So what is the parable about? Simply this. And I think I would summarize it this way. All I have to do to grow in my faith, which is a big statement, all I have to do, right, in my faith is stay planted where God has me and cooperate with whatever God is doing in me. Wherever he's got you, stay there especially in those four ways I said. God's word, prayer, staying planted in church community, and then also in adversity and struggle and suffering. And cooperate with, ever, what, with whatever he's trying to teach you. One of the things we talked about to the students this week, it was amazing while we were in Belize, is they realized that much of the distraction of life was removed. When you're, like your phone doesn't even work there. It's one thing we talked about. Boom, we get back and everybody's, you know, including me. Um, all of a sudden, all the distractions come back. And so we talked about the fact that you've got, and so often spiritual growth is about this, you're going to have to let, minimize the distractions because they come at you constantly. There are so many other things. The farmer has to minimize the distractions so that he can keep the seed planted where it is and cooperate with its growth so that it can produce fruit. This is it. God does the rest. This is really strange. It's not just it grows naturally. Jesus says that, but he, he's implying that the seed has to stay planted and that the farmer has to cooperate with what he wants the seed to do. I have found, I don't know if this hits anybody or not, but I am finding that that really is how spiritual growth happens. Does anybody else know what I mean? It's just, if I just stay where I am, and if I just cooperate with what God's doing, I can grow spiritually. All right, so what if I told you that wasn't the last line of the parable? It, it's not. And as good as all that is, because that's about spiritual growth, there is one more line, and this is it. As soon as the grain is ready... The farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle. He cuts it, for the harvest time has come. Some of us, me included, never get to this point. The most important part of the seed is the harvest. Grain, wheat, is harvested in order to be what? Consumed. Are you ready to be consumed? What are you talking about? That sounds so weird. Are you a cannibal? I mean, what? Jesus said those very words about, he said, this is my body given for you, my flesh. This is my blood being spilled out for you. You must consume me. And they were like, your teachings are too hard. It says many left him at that point. See, Jesus was talking about what it was really about. What he was saying to them was, I haven't come here to be a seed that is not harvested. I've come that God might grow me into the fullness of what I'm supposed to be, and he will cut me and offer me for consumption. The wheat, the grain becomes the bread of life. Are you willing to be pressed and pushed and molded into the bread of life so that the world can consume you? This is Christianity. We make it way too easy. We actually leave it at the spiritual growth. Oh, so many... A knowledgeable Christian is one of the worst things I've ever seen, honestly. Just full of knowledge, making sure everybody is corrected in their theology. Amen. One of the most unloving people I've ever seen. But a mature Christian is one who has the knowledge, the information, but has let the information transform their lives. I would say it this way, we grow to go. 
We grow to go. Go where? Out into the world. My favorite part of worship is the end. We're about to be there. Get out. I love being with you. I love this hour. Get out. Man, he's mean. Get out. Please don't stay here. Go. Let the world consume you. Be loved. Be all of these things. The world is starving for those who will be harvested and used. Amen. So will you go? Will you grow to go? That's the question. I pray that we would go into the world and be the bread of life.